there tends to be a misconception in our culture about the roles of faith and reason. A lot of people believe that faith is that which can't be proven true. It's that which you believe but can't be proven true. Reason, on the other hand, is the faculty by which we come to know truth. I recently saw this expressed nicely in a video that was sent to me by one of my most loyal viewers who happens to be an atheist. And the video was purporting that atheists employ reason and therefore can know truth, whereas people of faith are making assumptions that are really nothing more than superstitions that have no ground in rational thought whatsoever. Now, I'll be the first to admit that I've heard several religious people express things that seem to make no sense. It's just a bunch of nonsense or nice words that really don't have a whole lot of meaning to them. But this isn't really what true faith is. True faith is a form of knowledge, just as reason is a process by which we can come to know things that are also very much true in reality. And the two need to work together. John Paul II addressed this in his encyclical letter, Fides et Ratio, Faith and Reason. In addressing the two, John Paul II noticed that when we talk about faith, it is a way of knowing. But if you take reason away from faith, you're going to quickly devolve into a type of superstition. You know, I see this done a lot of times, even in Christian circles and in Catholic circles. I think, for example, the way in which a lot of Catholics will bury statues of St. Joseph in order to sell their home. Okay, well, that has nothing to do with faith. It's not pious devotion. That is superstition. Similarly, reason taken by itself is also problematic because it can make us think that everything that we know can be proven scientifically or can come from some scientific, rational thought process. But this too proves to be false. Think, for example, even outside the realms of faith. Think of something such as love. How can we rationally explain love? Doesn't it seem a little inadequate to say, oh, it's just a bunch of chemical processes? Or even when somebody tries to explain why they love their spouse or their beloved, a lot of times they'll say, oh, well, he makes me laugh or she listens to me or something like that. But even those explanations don't fully explain why the person truly loves another person. There seems to be something that transcends, something that goes beyond reason in explaining love. Well, the two, when they come together, all of a sudden can give us a fuller understanding of truth. You see, faith gives us some starting principles, namely that there is a God, that he's revealed himself, and that he's revealed certain truths. But then what we need to do is we need to use our rational faculty and apply it to our faith and say, now what does this mean for me in going about my life? How do I live out my life given this starting principle of faith? And that starting principle of faith is there whether you're an atheist or whether you're a Christian. For example, a Christian's going to start from the starting principle that I have faith that God exists and that he has revealed himself through sacred scripture, through traditions, etc., etc., and then applies reason to that. An atheist is still starting from a position of faith, though. They're starting from a position of faith that says, my faith says there is no God. So it's a philosophical assumption, at least. If you, if you want to call that faith, I guess that could be argued. But it's certainly a philosophical presumption that says there is no God. It also tends to argue a lot of people will say that the only thing that can be known then, therefore, is what can be scientifically proven. But see, that itself is a philosophical assumption. In other words, when somebody says, well, the only thing that we can truly know is what science can show us, my response to them would be, okay, show that to me scientifically. Prove that to me scientifically. Well, it can't be done. That's a philosophical statement. Similarly, science rests on other philosophical presumptions. One of them is that the world is, in fact, intelligible. If you don't first assume that you can know something, then science makes no sense whatsoever. If we assume that the world is just completely unintelligible and irrational, then science can't even get off the ground. Another thing that science seems to depend upon is the fact that the future will resemble the past. Uh, but the only basis that we have for saying that the future is going to resemble the past is that in the past, the future has always resembled the past. So it's a cyclical argument there, and it's not something that we can truly prove. We just have to take that as an assumption. So both Christianity and atheism rest on assumptions that really can't be proven by science, nor is it science's realm to prove that. See, that's the point that John Paul was trying to make, is that science is a way of knowing things. And what we learn scientifically certainly shouldn't be at odds with our faith. Otherwise, we need to rethink both of these things. Either the science has failed or our faith has been flawed in some way, or what we believe needs to be rethought. But we can say that science is not a way of knowing everything. And nor is faith a way of explaining everything. So another thing that people will be critical of are statements that you'll find in the scripture, such as Joshua halting the sun in the sky, and people will say, well, that shows 
the era of Christianity right there because the sun doesn't rotate around the earth and it seems to imply that. Well, the Bible in that passage isn't trying to give a scientific explanation. Science will give us the explanation of how our solar system works or something like that. To try to say that the Bible is trying to give a scientific explanation of things is a fallacy right there. It's trying to make a moral point. It's trying to make a faith point there, but not a scientific point. So we have to be careful how we apply our faith and our reason. Certainly there are times when our faith will tell us things, and it might use poetic language, so it's going to say things that might not be scientifically accurate, but it's not trying to make a scientific commentary. It's trying to make a theological commentary or a moral point, perhaps. Similarly, science can make points and it can teach us things about the universe, but science is never going to teach us proper moral behavior. The only way we're going to learn that is from some sort of a value system based on some kind of a philosophical understanding of, of who we are. And namely for us as Christians, we'll say that comes from our faith. God has revealed to us who we are. God has given us our moral code. But even for somebody who's not of faith, they do have to come up with some kind of a moral code to abide by. And that moral code is not going to be given to you by science. So it has to be grounded in some kind of a philosophical system there. So faith and reason aren't at odds with each other. Rather, when they work together, we get the fullness of truth. We can come to this sense where we know who we are as science, on a scientific level. In other words, how we're composed, what our bodies are made of, how we can treat illnesses, how we get diseases, these types of things. But we also know who we are on a spiritual level, who we are on a moral level, on dimensions that science can't begin to address. You know, what is the meaning of my life? That all comes from faith. And that's also knowledge. That's true knowledge. It's who we are. It's been revealed to us by God. And the fact that science can't prove it doesn't mean that it's not a form of knowledge.